So now I get to give my sermon. It's pretty short. Um, you all know I work at Bremwood. Or most of you I probably shared some story of some sort with. It's a, um, a religious organization treatment center, and it's under the agency of LSI, which is a Lutheran service. So we're a religious organization. We have a chapel, and we have a pastor. Um, pastor Dennis is a great guy. Uh, he leads worship every Tuesday and Bible studies um, on the other days. Um, and he provides the closest thing to a music program that Bremwood has because he allows all of the kids to sing in um, chapel on Tuesdays. Anything from Lincoln Park to share to whatever it is that they feel like singing, he lets them sing. And that's a really great thing for those kids. But when it comes to the teaching of the Bible, I kind of start to cringe because he just... I'm not sure he really knows how to connect with a teenager and what really can make them think of religion as something that's important to them. And I say this as a person who was pretty recently a teenager sitting in these pews wondering what it all really meant to me. Um, you have seen me in these pews most Sundays, but I didn't always know what I was doing here. At some point I started to realize that I didn't care about my relationship with God because I had a relationship with all of you. Um, I started to see you all as a community that empowered me and saw things in me that I, oh man. <laughs> um, you saw things in me that it would take me much longer to see in myself. So my relationship with the church was good, but my relationship with God was still developing. Um, I took my first step in furthering that relationship when Anna Bladel gave me a very firm nudge towards annual conference. Looking back, it's hard to imagine me as a junior in high school taking a plunge and going to annual conference saying, oh yeah, sure, I'll spend a weekend with a bunch of people I don't know and do churchy things. But I did. For some reason, I agreed to go, and I will ever, forever be thankful for that. Um, at that first annual conference, it was a roller coaster. I met new kids, I met a new pastor, and I started to meet a much larger faith community, many of which I still connect and see with every year that I've gone to conference. I realized that the Methodist Church, oh, sorry, I skipped. Oh, however, on top of all these wonderful things, I've also had some of the biggest heartbreaks um, with my church that I've experienced because I've come to realize that the Methodist Church is not always so united. At conference, we have a buzzword called holy conferencing, which to me is basically a concept that means when we start to struggle with making a decision, we take a break, we pray, we do some praise music to remind us that we're here to make decisions in the name of our faith. And I remember the first time that I needed to take a break. I wasn't voting, I was just there as a page, but I was listening. I was paying attention because the whole legislative process fascinated me. And since I was just a page that year, I didn't know the details of what was happening, but I did know that a lot of inflammatory words were coming out of those floor microphones, and I was really struggling to understand how my Methodist church my extended faith community could really believe such hurtful things. I was a junior in high school and I had just taken a huge leap of faith into relationship with the Methodist Church and I started to regret that leap. I stepped out of the conference hall and into the bathroom. Fists clenched, fists clenched and no doubt red-faced, I once again started to question what religion really meant to me. But that wasn't my last conference. I've gone back every year I could since. So what happened? How did, my, how did I find strength to get back on the floor to page and then return as a voting member? All of you. You were not there, but people like you were. Specifically, two older church ladies who had no doubt taken a break from their knitting at their tables to go to the bathroom were there, and they saw me. And I don't know if they recognized that I was frustrated, but they talked to me. A teenage girl with a bright orange shirt bring pink streaks in her hair, and a bright rainbow stool. They saw me, and whether they recognized my anger or not, they empowered me to continue. I don't recall exactly what they said, but it helped. 
That's what faith communities do. We lift each other up. These two ladies, who even wrote me a card later that day, reminded me of how wonderful a true faith community can be to have. I took another big step in my faith that year at conference. I learned how to be called. Pastor Steve was preaching um, at some ridiculous time at night after we'd finished up our duties at annual conference as pages, and the topic was being called to work. I remember sitting there exhausted and overwhelmed and hearing Steve's words about how God calls people to do good in the world. I realized that I have been called. I've always known I wanted to make a difference in the world, but at the moment, or but at that moment, surrounded by all these new friends, I realized that it had probably been God nudging me this entire time. Pastor Steve continued to impact my journey after annual conference when he invited me to travel to England for a Wake Up the World tour. Once again, my faith community, you guys, all of you, sent me to England, and I will never be able to repay that favor. You provided me with the opportunity to explore a new country and a new level of faith understanding. You all have kept me going through good and bad because for whatever reason, you have always believed in me. Going to England was another big step in my journey because in many ways, it was a miracle that I was even able to go. If you hadn't all supported me or I hadn't gone to annual conference that first year and met Pastor Steve, I would have never gone. I spent the rest of that first conference year soaking in the process of annual conference so that the following year I would be more prepared. I have since been a voting member of Iowa annual conference three times, the last of which may have been the most important. Last year at annual conference, I returned to High V Hall after skipping last year because I was studying abroad and everything was just all new. It looked all different and it was no longer intimidating and I just, I was ready to do all of the work. I was refreshed. I was so happy to be there. I was unafraid. I knew what was up. I saw former pastors, former acquaintances from past conferences, and former pages who had also grown up to become delegates. Nothing was surprising. Nothing was shocking. I was just ready to get to work. I was no longer running to the bathroom to hide from the argument. I walked away at the end of, dis at the, end of the sessions and discussed it with my cohort. I became upset on occasions and sometimes had some harsh words to say. In fact, I was told that I should be just elected bishop because conference would just get over much faster because I would just tell it like it is. Um, um, I was ready to face the hate and make the change. By this time, I knew exactly what my relationship was with the United Methodist Church. I was here to make a difference. I was here to be a part of the progression of the church in whatever way that manifested itself. I remember last year I was headed to lunch with Pastor Dave and his delegate from Wesley. We were greeted by another group of people headed to lunch and musing about where they would eat. Upon seeing us, they facetiously said, I hear a bunch of radicals are meeting over at the Royal Mile for lunch. I turned to Dave and asked, we're meeting at the Royal Mile. Are we radicals? He turned to me and said, well, you certainly are. Once again, people seeing in me things that I didn't recognize in myself. I'm still on a faith journey, but I know that journey will continue here and at annual conference and maybe even general conference someday. I believe that this church is doing wonderful things and I'm going to make sure we keep doing it. I want you all to keep going and keep doing the good that you do. And just thank you again for supporting me through everything. <laughs>